Hello, this video is a part of C programming videos on securitytube.net and in this video I will be talking more about C structures. It is a primer to C structures. We have already many data types in C language like integers, floats, characters, pointers, arrays. So are, aren't these all types not sufficient? Do we really need a separate data type as structures? Let's see first few examples and the need of structures will be self clear. So if we want to define a, a point on a xy plane, xy axis, we have to mention its x coordinate and y coordinate. Probably we can define two float, float type variables like x coordinate and y coordinate and we can store the value of x coordinate and y, and y coordinate in these two variables. But with these two separate variables, it is not clear that these two coordinates make a single point. If there is a guarding variable, say, num say point and which has two elements x, elem x coordinate and y coordinate, then it is intuitively more clear that uh, this is one point and it has its members like x coordinate and y coordinate. Or take another example, every uh, a person has his name, his age, his email address. You can store them in three separate variables, yes, no doubt. But instead of storing them in three separate variables, if you can combine them in a single variable, it will be intuitively more easy to program and the programs will be more readable and more understandable. And that's the exact need of structures. Structures stores data of various type attributes, uh, of various types attributed by a same object. So structure will be storing data of different data types. It can be different, it can be same again, but of the same object. In this example, I have written a very simple C program. I have included standard input output in main function. I have defined a structure. Now concentrate here. In this part, I am the struct is the keyword. So struct is keyword in C language. So while defining the structure, you have to define it like struct, then the name of the structure, then in curly braces, you have to define all the objects of this structures or all the members of this structure. So my current structure is named point. So I have a point and the members are x coordinate and y coordinate. And both of them, I want their data types to be float. So I am giving it like struct point float x semicolon float y semicolon. This is the end of structure. So here the structure ends and at the end of structure you have to write semicolon. This is the definition of structure. Now remember very clearly with structure definition you are not allocating any memory. This is just another user defined data type. This is very much similar to integer, float, character. This is another data type. So our name of data type is point. So point is very much similar to integer. For allocating any memory to store the information for point as integer, you have to write statement like point pt1. Now you have allocated memory of size struct point and you can easily access that variable with pt1. Remember very clearly structure definition does not allocate any memory but it just defines a user defined data type. I have actually done a small mistake here while defining a variable of type structure I should mention struct here so it, it should be struct point p, pt1. Now pt1 will be a variable of type point. If I want to avoid writing struct every time, I can go simply go ahead and type def struct point so that point will be will be or point can be easily used as, as a standard data type. Let's not go in details about type def etc. Et Let's concentrate on structures also. Structures only as of now. So well and good. We have defined structure, we have allocated memory for the structure. Now the important thing, 
how to assign values to the members of the structure and there comes the dot operator or the structure member operator with dot operator you can assign values to the members of the structure so pt1 dot x equal to 1.2 will assign value 1.2 to the x member or x coordinate will be assigned as 1.2 similarly pt1 dot y equal to 3.4 will assign 3.4 to y coordinate and i can simply go ahead and print these values with printf statement pt1 dot x pt1 dot y now let's go ahead and compile the program gcc structs dot c and a dot out uh, it has given you the output as x coordinate is so and so y coordinate is so and so now as you know the power of pointers in c you must be wondering can i define a pointer to the structure if i can define a pointer to the structure i can easily pass the structure over function i can typecast any other uh, data type to my structure to do some jugglery so how to define a pointer to the structure let's again open the same program let's define one more variable say pt2 and this time i will define it as a pointer type variable so struct point asterisk pt2 so now pt2 is a pointer to the structure now again remember here i have defined pt2 as a pointer and yet i have not allocated any memory to define the members of this second variable pt2 so if i go ahead and simply write pt2 uh, by the way remember uh, while defining or while accessing the members of a pointer to the structure i cannot use dot operator but i have to use this arrow operator or carry operator so if i want to save say pt2 arrow x equal to i can write 1.4 this is perfectly valid pt2 carry y equal to 33.6 this is again completely valid but remember i have not yet allocated any memory to this pointer pt2 so this pointer pt2 is still null by default whenever new pointer is defined it is assigned value null or it can be either garbage as well so if i simply go ahead and compile this program this program will get compiled properly but while running the program at run time i will give i will get a segmentation fault let's go ahead and check that let me compile the program gcc the compilation will go ahead properly but while running the program it is giving me segmentation fault and that's simply because i have defined a pointer but i have not allocated memory to that pointer so i am supposed to allocate the memory to pointer first now i have to give pt2 equal to malloc size of now it is again size of pt1 so i can write pt1 as well because pt1 was also a structure of time type pt2 so i can write pt1 as well or i can even write of size point but here comes the important point and also i have to of course give it like properly i should write this only then the pro my program will work okay now here the problem is every time i have to write struct point struct point now instead of writing struct point every time i can go ahead and simply do a type def for this point so i can avoid that okay for time being i have written it like that and let me go ahead and print these two values as well so again while printing i will use pt2 carry x pt2 arrow y now this program looks good i should i will go ahead and compile the program it got it gets compiled properly and it is running also properly x coordinate is 1.4 y coordinate is 33.5999 whatever i had defined Now here comes one interesting observation 
when I was defining the variable I had defined it like 33.6 but while printing the value of this variable through the program it is showing me 33.599998 why this approximation is happening for this float type variable and the answer lies in how C stores the float or how, how my computer stores the float time variable float, float type of variables into memory this is not exactly uh, time to exactly say how this float variables are stored so let's defer that discussion as of now but just a note there is one more problem in our last program I had deliberately miss that step and which is freeing the variable here I have allocated the variable but I am not freeing the variable and that's a blunder that's a big mistake whenever you are using malloc statement be extra careful to free every instance or for every exit statement you must free that statement otherwise you are creating memory leaks in your program and which is very dangerous so I must free this pt2 but I need not free the PT1 because I have not allocated PT1 I have just assigned PT1 to be a variable of type pointer it's not a pointer I have not specifically used malloc for PT1 so when program will or when will when program will come out of this main loop automatically the area which is allocated for PT1 will be freed that's not my job to free but here I have specifically allocated the malloc so I so I must free the free free it with free statement remember always avoid usage of malloc as far as possible here I have used malloc just to say how to define a pointer type of variable but generally but generally inside a function you will not be needing a pointer because instead of using a um, pointer and then mallocing it I would have simply used like struct point pt2 that would have served my purpose when to use pointer probably if I want to call another function then instead of passing whole structure over this function calls I can simply pass the pointer rather than structure but avoid a malloc usages as far as possible that's it for this video Feel free to browse more videos on SecurityTube on C programming as well as other programming and hacking details. Thank you.